Hello everyone and welcome to the 17th episode, can you believe it's 17? 17th episode of the For Fun of Knit podcast. Uh, my name is Linda and I'm known as Nena Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. And my part-time co-host, you are? I'm Emmy Putt, I'm her mother. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and a very good co-host, I have to say. It has been a while. It has been, I don't know, probably five weeks. We podcast, I think, just after Mother's Day in May. Uh, it was not our intention to uh, wait this long, but life happens. Yes. We've for been sure. enjoying some really good weather, so we've been out and about in the sun. Mum just came back from golf. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> and it was a wonderful day. It was a wonderful day. So she's had a full day. She's golfing in the morning and podcasting in the afternoon. So yeah. that's kind of yeah. a fun day. Yeah. We have lots, uh, lots to cover today, but just uh, as an intro for those of you that, that might be tuning in for the first time, if you are, thank you very much. Uh, for those of you that have been around for a while, thank you. Huge hug to all of you. Um, and you can skip by this part. Uh, I will put uh, timestamps for all the things we're going to talk about in the show notes below in the description box below on YouTube. Um, but this podcast is focused all about knitting and the fun and hopefully I'll expand someday into the different fiber arts like crochet which I keep threatening to do and spinning which I keep threatening to do. Uh, those are all aspirational. Uh, this is really a journal, honestly a diary of sort of our knitting journey. Yeah. Um, and so we're hoping that it, you know, it's it's informative for some of you and maybe entertaining. No politics, no social commentary. There are a lot of podcasters that provide that content, and I I love it and I listen to it. But that's this podcast is just about for fun of knit. Um, and also, I don't make money off this channel in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I do this surely for the fun of it. Um, if I'm doing giveaways, it's out of my own stash because I'm happy to share. I would love more people to knit. Uh, I found knitting very late in life, three years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, haven't looked back. And I've loved, I've loved every every minute of it. And so, part of that enjoyment, I hope uh, we can we can share. Um, that said, would love it if you actually enjoy the content and enjoy watching myself and myself and my mom every once in a while. Uh, then give it a thumbs up and also subscribe. Uh, subscribing is not really an obligation, but it allows you to know when the next podcast is coming up. Uh, and that way it also helps me grow my YouTube channel and my community. Uh, again, not for any monetary reasons. I'm not going to be doing commercials or selling space or any of that. It's just for uh, increasing the community and growing the community of knitters locally for me. Uh, on that note, again, lots of fun stuff. You can't see it, but we are surrounded surrounded by fiber stuff. I should probably take a picture afterwards and load it up, but uh, we have finished objects. We have works in progress. We have a few acquisitions. And so shall we start with finished objects? Absolutely. Do you want to go first? Sure. Do you want to show what you did? I uh, finished uh, a shawl and um, I'll help you. I'll hold one in. Ooh, look at this. I finished Look the shawl, and then I have to tell you that I made a few boo boos uh, in it. You have to speak louder. I I have made a few boo boos <laughs> in this, but looks lovely. Uh, 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 I should have zagged when I zigged, <laughs> and so uh, I I looked at it and I thought, oh, I didn't drop any stitches there, so what the heck? I'll just leave it the way it is. And actually, uh, it turned out to be quite nice and I'm quite liking it. So this was actually to go with a dress that had bare shoulders. And um, uh, it has all the colors in it that is in the um, shawl. So that is why I made this one. So that was one of them and I thoroughly enjoyed knitting this. So yeah, so that is one. I finished half of a oh, pair she's, of socks. She's, she's on a roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I finished half of a, a pair of socks and I'm... Whoa, 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 slow down, Nellie. Come back here. I want to see that. I want to I want to see that sock. Oh, sorry. We want to see. Okay. Look at this beautiful sock. I mean, I'm just in the process of 
also knitting the second one and I'm just started so uh, it's going to take me a while before I finish that one and then of course the heels are in there and Linda has a particular method of cutting uh, the wool and picking up stitches there to put the heel in that's absolutely frightening to me so I'm not ever going to do that <laughs> but <laughs> but she never can, say never <laughs> and she has done this many times so yeah so it, it's called an afterthought heel an afterthought heel well it definitely is an afterthought but um it, it it's not something that i would like to attempt but anyway i just uh, want to show them this beautiful skein yeah it's lovely and it's very fine wool but it, it's a fingering yeah and it's um very nice to knit with and this, I do believe, is Camp Fiber Yarns, Canadian Dyer Camp Fiber Yarns, Tracy, I do believe. Um, the name is escaping me, so I'll try and find it because we don't have the ball band. Oh, 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 shoot, I'm brilliant. <laughs> I keep forgetting every once in a while, I remember when I'm winding it to put the ball band in the middle of the yarn. Oh, well, so you're Mom, lucky. no wonder you couldn't find it. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> She, could, right. she couldn't she find couldn't. the ball band. So this is Camp Fiber Yarns. And let me just show that to you. Camp Fiber Yarns. There you go. And this is the her May color of the month. And it's called a ball of gas. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a beautiful... Now, we've got weird weather and uh, at the moment. It's beautiful and sunny, but we've got all these clouds drifting over and my umbrella, sun umbrella, is a turquoise. So everything you're seeing is probably going to be a little bit more green than it really is. But that is a beautiful sage green yarn with, it is, with, with salmon and chocolate and a little bit of black. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It but is. there you go. So this is on our Vibrant Base 80-20 fingering, which is obviously 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. And again, camp fiber yarns. I'm in love with this dyer. So more to come on camp fiber yarns. Right. This one, sorry, this is the technical aspect of podcasting, mom. Yes. Yarn. Yarn. I'm going to put it down below because honestly, I can't remember. I've got a, I've got two skeins of this as well and I can't remember what it is. And of course we don't have the ball bands, do we? No. No. Um, so I will put this in the show notes. This is a blend. This is mostly wool. It's got a little bit of acrylic in it. Um, but it is a beautiful gradient. So it's a lot of fun. I think that's called a gradient when it flips back. Or maybe it's something else. But I can't remember what it calls when it goes into different colors. But it's beautiful. And the fun thing about this shawl is when Mum started knitting it, I liked it so much that, ta-da, I knit one. But I knit one, and this pattern, by the way, is called Tierra de Tejedores, which means land of the knitters. How appropriate. Yes. Teje, uh, tierra de Tejedores. And uh, um, it's by Winelieve. Winelieve. Win I can't even say it. Winelieve. W I N E L V I is the first night name. Winelvi. Winelvi. Winelvi or Winelvi. Throconen. I'm going to put that in the screen. I just butchered that. I'm terribly sorry. But this is their his pattern, his or her. I'm not too sure. Winelvi. I don't know. Um, but I made the absolutely same shawl. Now, Mom, I want to hold yours up again. This is in Lion Brand uh, Mandala Ombre in the Harmony colorway. It's for a very, very close family friend um, who loves blues. And I just want to hold your shawl up in front of my shawl because you're going to notice something different. This is the same pattern. We cast on the same stitches. The yarn is the same weight. And as we go along, <laughs> I'm just going to go along. <laughs> I'm just going to go along. I think there's going to be a slight discrepancy between the two shawls. <laughs> Keep going, Mom. Keep. 
Where's your shawl? Okay, so give me this. You hang on to that end. Okay. Mum shawl ends here and mine goes way over here. <laughs> yeah. Part of that is because mum shawl is done to pattern. And she's got probably about almost two feet of depth in the back of her shawl. When I knit it with the Lion brand, completing a pattern only gave me half, half the depth. I don't understand. It is because this is 100% acrylic, because uh, the person I'm knitting for, um, I'd love them to be able to wear it to work and then just come home and throw it in, in uh, the washing machine. And then if you ever watch this, this is watch this show, this is for you. It's coming in the mail. Um, but I don't know if it's because it's acrylic and it just did, doesn't loosen up. Or I know, I know you're a tighter knitter than I am. So you would think that mine would be psh, looser and bigger. And naturally well no but I did extra repeats remember yeah, I did a whole did. extra yeah, three yeah, sections yeah. so yeah so I did an extra whole three sections but this is something that uh, Annette would really like because oh. so I actually put three more repeats in this shawl to give it more depth and I'm a looser knitter than mum so I would have thought I would have naturally had more depth in the shawl um, but it didn't turn out that way so one note to self um, if you ever use this yarn, you're going to need more than you think you do, and you might have to do extra repeats. Two, first time for me knitting with acrylic in terms of a garment, and I've never blocked anything in acrylic, and I thought if I blocked it, maybe it would grow. Acrylic does not grow. No. I should have figured that out. It's plastic, right? Yeah. Isn't acrylic sort of a derivative of plastic? Yeah, I didn't realize that either. And so, and the other thing that I notice is, is it curls just a little bit. It's beautiful. It's actually a nice detail because of the marled um, or the, uh, the ombre effect. The hem curls just a little bit. Um, and I tried to block that out and I couldn't block it out. Yeah. It makes no and, difference. And it's beautiful. Actually, this stitch, this stitch yeah. here yeah. looks a lot like brioche. It, well, very good point. This pattern is very simple. It is just strips of um, stockinette and a, a sort of a, a cheater fisherman's rib, a one-sided fisherman's rib. Yeah. And it actually looks like it's brioche. Yes, yes mom, very is. good point. But look at that. Isn't this lovely? So if you, and it's a very fast knit, have to say fast knit. Yes. Wouldn't you is. say? Yes, it's very gratifying. It is. Yes. So this is a great pattern. I'll put the picture up if I haven't already. Um, but this would be a great gift knit, and whether you knit it in actually wool wool or in acrylic, it fits perfectly. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a good it's a good gift. Absolutely. I I actually liked it so much. I bought the same yarn in sunset colors like peach and pink and yellow for myself. Yeah, because I'm yeah. going to knit one. Because honestly, look at this thing. This thing she's going to be able to wrap around herself. 25 times it's just it's cozy it's cozy it's lovely yeah it's absolutely lovely yeah. <laughs> anyway so that was one finished object was our shawls and we knit those jointly mom showed you her socks already which yeah. is wonderful do you have any other finished objects not finished, finished objects. Oh, okay i'm so, just uh projects uh, and uh, okay in the works okay so we will go into whips in a second but i finished my birthday socks so and there they you are, go they are very pretty aren't they lovely aren't they happy they're very I happy. seem to have a theme and colors going on yeah this yeah. actually yeah, works I very well so. i think so but interesting okay so this is the hello stella in the grocery girls colorway and that's how it knits up it is just the perfect blend of neon yellow and bright pinks and purple speckles and navy yeah. speckles and I just could knit this yarn over and over again what fun and then I can't remember what the heel I just used a mini for the contrasting heels and toes what I will say about these socks is I knit them one at a time on nine inch circulars using a 2.25 millimeter needle 
And I don't know if you can see it, but I think you can. You'll be able to see this. My sock goes straight and then it goes out and then it goes back in. So I've got this sort of thick or wider portion where I joined the afterthought heel. The reason it goes like that as opposed to straight is I had to create extra room in my sock. I apparently knit much tighter, a much tighter gauge when yeah. I'm using a nine inch circular. You know, just one sock at a time, knitting in the round constantly creates a much tighter gauge for me than when I'm doing magic loop two at a time or magic loop period. Same size needle, no difference there, but I had no room in this sock. So when it came to cutting the afterthought he and putting in the heel, I had to knit, I do believe I knit 10 or 12 rows before I started decreasing just to give myself more depth in the heel so that you know from my arch from what is that is that the arch the, the top of your arch yeah the top that's of the, the arch. top of your arch to the bottom of my heel it's the widest part of your foot basically I needed much more depth so note to self Linda if you're ever doing nine inch circulars go up a needle size because I did not know that 64 stitches um, and then my preferred length is a 15 inch from toe to um, right. to cuff. Yeah, I like 15. I you did, like I did 13. Mine, uh, uh, yes, but I did mine in 72 stitches. You did 72 on that one. Yeah. And the reason, and we're, it's going to be interesting to see how that one fits, is because you originally cast on. Do you remember 64? No, you originally cast on 72 because we were going to do the. Uh, knit three slip one knit three slip oh, one knit right. three slip one we were going to try and create a bit of a pattern but what we didn't realize is when you slip the stitch you're not knitting it um it's not a stretch it's not as stretchy and even with 72 stitches it was still too tight yeah so we have since learned i have since learned that in order to knit three slip one knit three slip one you actually have to knit three yarn over, slip, yarn over. Don't know how that works, but apparently that adds, don't quote me on that, but apparently that adds some, some actual, there's a pattern online on Ravelry, and if I can find it, I'll put it in the show notes, but um, I just remember reading that, 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 yeah, if you slip a stitch and don't knit it, it, you it, need to add one You need it. to add a lot more stitches. So, hence, 72 stitches. Then she decided not to do that pattern and kept the 72 stitches and just kept knitting. So it'll be interesting to see. Now, mom is a much tighter knitter than I am. So it'll be interesting to see. But these were my birthday socks. That's a finished object. Do I have another finished object? Well, your sweater. Oh, what I'm wearing. All oh, right. Yes. Duh. Hello. So this is my ranunculus. I'll come a little bit closer. This is the ranunculus by... Midori Hiroshi. I hope I pronounced that correct. Um, and this is made out of a Siddhar yarn, which the brand name is called Sublime. And it's in their DK weight. It is a combination of cotton and bamboo, which is their Sublime uh, base and DK weight. And it is just in their chartreuse. I don't, I think it was a color number. Um, but I love this pattern. I would make this pattern. Whew, I'm eating here. Somewhere I'm eating here. I would make this pattern yeah. again. Over Absolutely. and over. Yeah. It is. And I would also use this yarn again. Yes, it was it's nice. nice. It's, it also hangs nice to it. It has a beautiful drape. Yeah. A beautiful drape. Uh, it does grow. And one of my viewers did say it's going to grow. It does. It grows lengthwise. Yeah. Not so much out. No, but it lengthwise. grew lengthwise yes. and the stitches didn't bloom, which is interesting. So in other words, the stitches didn't come once I blocked it, they didn't fill out and come closer together and, and sort of fill in the gaps. It right, didn't do that. Because of the bamboo, I would imagine. Yeah, probably because it's just not wool, wool expands. Like when you block wool, the stitches actually bloom and then they, they grow together. And the whole sweater might get a little bit bigger, but also all the 
you know, the stitches sort of don't have any holes in them. This stayed very much like a linen, you know, it just didn't grow together, but it yes. grew in length. Yes. But um, I but absolutely love, and for this weather, it's perfect. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. perfect. So that was our finished objects. That was quite yeah. a haul. That was. Mind actually. you, it's been, it's been five weeks, right? Yeah. Um, so now let's talk about works in progress. What do you have? have what are you working on? I, I'm working on a, a, a little cotton sweater that I had this yarn from my oldest daughter who purchased it, oh, probably about 30 years ago. And I still kept it and it's a, a boucle and I really do like uh, the color of it. It's uh, in a turquoise, which is one of my favorite colors. And it has a little bit of, of uh, pink in it, a little bit of um, yellow in it. It is just a pretty, pretty um, yarn. And uh, it's, it's lovely actually to knit with. I'm quite thrilled with it. But, um, Do you have the pattern with you? Don't mind her; she just leans off screen. No, you know something that is something that I I forgot. No this is, this No, is that's that's the yarn. Yeah. So yeah, okay, talk about the yarn, and then I will I'll put a picture somewhere of the actual pattern because we don't know the name of the pattern. Okay, well, but what's this the yarn? Boucle is Penguin mm -hmm. from Penguin um, Company, and it's uh, in the Mikado. The name Base. of the uh, particular boucle is Bika. Mikado and it's uh, and it it's just has a number 7 percent uh, cotton yeah 20 percent it says 28 percent acetate and 15 percent viscose viscose okay and then 67 percent yeah cotton. so 43 percent yeah non um, right. fiber and yeah. then 57 percent cotton but let's just take I just want to show a little closer so you can see is that the right way around I guess it doesn't yeah. really matter does it no it's a, it's the right way so you can see the beautiful pops of color I hope you can see that from under my umbrella but it's got pink and yellow and a little bit of sage green yeah woven all, all in that beautiful yeah, aqua it's, it's it's gorgeous I just I just love it and I can't wait until it is finished so uh, you yeah. know, having about three or four different projects to work on. I have another sweater that I'm working on. And, uh, you know, so it's going to take me a while before this is finished, but I'm enjoying every minute of it. And it's quite funny because when my sister thought she was more of a monogamous knitter, Mum thought she would be a monogamous knitter and couldn't understand why I had so many projects on the go. Well, I think Classy, Classina now has nine projects on the go and you have four or five. I've got uh, four. Uh, Pink, the Turk, Turkish. sock. Yeah, the hat. Oh, and the hat. That's yeah. four. You've got four projects still on the go. And, and the socks. That's, that's, okay. Yeah, that's four. Yeah. Okay. Four on the go. So there you go. Yeah. I come by it honestly. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Now, I have more like, you know, 15 to 20, but that's a different story. Yeah. That is. <laughs> that's a totally sure. different yeah. story. Yeah. Wonderful. So that'll be fun to see you progress on those. And with mum's um, sweater that she's making in the cotton, which again, we'll put the name in the picture in here somewhere. That's been a bit of a challenge because you were originally um, going to do a patterned sweater yes, yes. with a patterned yoke, yes. but the boucle and the color just wiped out the pattern. You couldn't see it at all. No. So we chose a totally different pattern. And just uh, leave it plain because the boucle yeah. is already dressy enough at this is. It's a statement on its own. Yes. Absolutely. And then now all we're we're working with is gauge mom in this particular one is doing for some strange reason a looser gauge i don't know why i think it's yeah. the size of the needles or something or maybe it's the yarn it's probably yeah no it's it's that both it's yeah. the boucle it's the nubbly part of it but also the heavier needles and the heavier needles. needles yeah and so what we're having to do is because it's a top-down sweater we're just 
knitting every two inches to figure out and then trying it on to figure where's the right spot for mom to separate for the sleeves. Yeah. Because she doesn't want it to be a big and bulky. No. But you want some positive ease. In yes, it. absolutely. There you go. But so that, so it's, that's it's what we're going to do after this. We're going to try it on again and see. I think we're at the right spot to separate for the sleeves. Perfect. I think so. Well, fingers crossed. Okay, so works in progress for me. Almost a finished object, but not quite. These were my silver bell socks from the last time. I just finished the toes and I just have to do the afterthought heels, which if I measure this correctly, uh, this, oh, what was this yarn? This yarn was, the name's escaping me. Oh, I'm bad too now. Did I actually keep the ball band? I don't know if I kept the ball band in here. Yes, timber yarns I did. So this is timber yarns in their self-striping. Uh, it's 80% merino, 20% nylon. And this is their silver bells colorway. This always happens to me. I always end up with a lot of yarn left on socks. So I have lots of odds and ends. Um, but for me, where I have to put in the afterthought heels, I have to put them in the white. I didn't want white heels. I, you can't control that. That's the distance, you know. Yeah. What I should have done in retrospect is made them well, you can't count. You, you ah, can't no, count you can't it. count that because it's from no. the toe. I did the toe up socks. I didn't do cuff down. I did toe up. And so when I got to, yeah, hmm. But because it is self-striping, you cannot. Okay. Uh, no, but you can. So here's another tip. Hmm. If you are doing toe up you your your heel has to go where your heel has to go you're yeah. measuring your sock so but if you did cuff down and you were gonna knit until your toe was to start you could measure in advance and say oh no my heel's gonna end up right in the white I think I'll knit another row I'll make this a little longer until seven inches would get into the purple do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you do top down in striping socks, you have more control over where you put the heel. Your so sock might be a little longer or shorter, depending on which stripe you want to put your heel That's in. That's true, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that until just now. Ah! <laughs> Revelation. Revelation. <laughs> Number 365-C. There you go. Revelation. Okay, yeah. well, that's going to be the title of this video. Okay. Dang, now I've got to put in white socks. i got to put in white heels, but if I'd done it top down, I wouldn't have had to do that. Who yeah. wants white heels? Yeah. Okay, anyway, still like them, but they're a work in progress. My next work in progress is another pair of socks, and these ones are a little bit more complicated, and they're taking me a very long time because these are a detailed pattern sock, and they're lovely. They're by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And it's her Sherwood sock um, pattern. I don't think it's on Ravelry until the fall. Um, but this is them. And this is Sassy Strings yarn in the Twilight colorway. And what I love about, I'm just going to put my hand in here so that you can see the pattern. So you can yes, see the very pattern. Very pretty, very pretty. Sorry, I'm halfway through a, a, yeah. a, a repeat. So that, I don't know if you can see it with the variegated yarn. You can see it in person, but it might be a little bit awkward. Oh, in. Like, um, and then there's also yeah. a pattern on the back. So I love it. You're doing quite a detailed lace pattern on the front. Then she gives you a break on the back where you knit a bit, do a little bit of an easier pattern, and then knit a little bit. Yeah. So it's it's a very fun knit. I have to say I would recommend this pattern. Very well written. Uh, it's top down. Um, it's a heel and gusset, you know, construction for the for the heel. Um, but the lace pattern at first I thought it was going to be intimidating. It's not. It's a very well um, explained pattern and I'm using stitch markers so I'm not getting lost but what I do find is I have to concentrate and I'm slower 
So these are just going to take me, it's probably going to take me a while to finish these. So, but I'm loving them and I love uh, the yarn on those. But yeah, so there you go. I am still perplexed about the whole top down yes, thing. Yes, I'm yes. just, <laughs> yeah, there you the go. Self striping, that's a different, that's a different thing. Concept. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any sweaters in the work at the moment. Um, next time we meet, I will talk about Patrick's sweater. I have a new approach. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Um, <laughs> but I have been working on a lot of shawls. So let's talk about shawls. Um, where should I start? Let us start with this one, which is my newest cast on. And this was, you know, I have all the never make plans. I, I absolutely admire the folks that can do make nine, you know, in 2020 or, or make a plan to make very specific patterns. I'm too flighty for that. Obviously I'm just, I get attracted by too many things. And so this is section one of the Vertices United shawl. And actually it starts at this end and you knit and knit and knit and knit. It's just garter stitch and you're uh, switching yarns. It's a two, it's just a striped part. And so this is a Stephen West pattern called Vertices United. And I started knitting this. I'm almost at the end of section one. There are five sections, but Stephen West has several sayings. And one of the words he created was a shank, a sh uh, shanklet. A schwanklet? A schwanklet. For a shawl blanket. A shanklet. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is only section one of five. Wow. And I can already wrap it all the way around my neck like a little, you know, cozy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm not even finished section one. <laughs> but I started this, one, because I wanted an easy knit, but two, because of the Fiber Hustle podcast and Chevrolet Stuff podcast. Chevy started talking about it, that she felt late to the party and she wanted to cast it on because Fiber Hustle, the guys, Aaron and Chip from Fiber Hustle were doing it. And so I flipped from her podcast over to Fiber Hustle. I'd never watched them before. Oh my God, they were a hoot. And they were having a Vertices Unite knit along. So it started June 1st. I just started this about a week ago. Um, and it goes until August 8th. And I can't commit to getting this done by August 8th, but I was all in when it came to a Stephen West pattern. I love, okay. I, I, I can say I met Stephen West, but not really. It was at Barcelona Knits. He was there with La Bien Amé, I do believe it was. Or was it West Wolf? I can't remember who he was with, but he was there greeting people and meeting people and you could walk up and get your picture taken with him. So I sort of fangirled all over him a little bit. Hi, Stephen, oh, there you go. And not that I'd knit anything of his at that time. I bought a lot of his wool, <laughs> but <laughs> so I met him, sort of met him. You know, he said hello. He was very, very personable, very warm. But if you watch any of his tutorials, he's hilarious. So what have I picked up from Stephen West? Keep on knitting, kitten. Keep on knitting, kitten. That's yeah, one thing. Yeah. Every project is a color pop opportunity. So that's what this shawl was. It's a color pop opportunity. I've got so many one skein wonders that uh, he's like, oh, don't worry. He talks about, oh, you know, there's no such thing as a stash. Nobody has a stash. They have, you're a yarn curator. You are a curator of fiber. And I'm like, I love you, Stephen. <laughs> I, I don't have a stash. I don't, you know, I don't spend money needlessly on yarn. A I'm a curator of fiber. So all those wonderful things that he says, don't swatch, watch. Yeah. In other words, eh, swatching. Who needs to swatch? Just watch what you're doing. Yeah. If it's too big, go back and do it again. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> Sorry, love that. Anyway, this is Vertices United. Little story about Vertices United because I posted on Instagram my colors that I was going to use. I was going to use, um, I do believe I was going to use this beautiful green. I was going to use some Shirley Bryan yarn, which is their Scuttle Sock. I was going to use the Peony and I was going to use, uh, I'm missing one, two, three. I was going to use um, Polka Dot Creek, the cream. 
And the last one I was going to use was another Shirley, ah, Shirley Bryan yarns, but in a deep dark purple, and it was called Braverman. And I was going to pair the deep dark purple with this beautiful bright green. Um, it's not chartreuse, it's more mossy than chartreuse, but it's somewhere in between. This to me is chartreuse. Yeah, this yeah. is, moss is a little bit darker, so it's somewhere in between. And I was gonna pair this, and I did pair it with the dark, beautiful purple called Braverman. When I started knitting this section, because you start with this section, which is the stripies, um, it was too dark. The two colors together were the same darkness, different colors, yeah. but the same, I don't know what that's called, level of dark. Hues. Same, yeah, yeah, whatever that is. Yeah. And so while it was- Intensity. Yeah, they were the same intensity. Maybe that's it, Mom. And it just, ugh, it just didn't sit well with me at all. So um, that was one thing. So I swapped out the purple for the peony in this piece. I was gonna use this anyway, but I swapped the purple for the peony and I decided that the green, um, oh, sorry, I didn't swap out the, the, I just changed colors around. I swapped out the purple, pardon me, for uh, this Chester um, Yarn Co. And I'm trying to remember the color, it's in here somewhere. It's in here, let me get it. So the purple became a beautiful bronze, which is Chester Knits um, in her Featherlight base, which is a plied fingering, it's 100% merino, in the sundown colorway. And it's really a, it really is a bronze colorway. So that's Chester Knits. And this is the beautiful bronze colorway. It's probably coming out a little bit, not quite right, but close enough. And so instead of starting with purple and green, I started with bronze and pink. Love that combination. Yeah. Absolutely love that combination. Then the next section was going to be um, pink and white. That's another section, but instead of pink, I'm going to do the cream and chartreuse. Now I changed out the yarns. This was a leftover skein. My camera might not pick out the difference, but this, again, this is about tones or intensity and making sure that they sort of go well together. This chartreuse green went better with my Shirley Bryan yarn than this one did. This one for some reason came out too strong against, it wasn't the right green. Very close, mm. they're, they're so similar, it's crazy. But this one just came out a little bit nicer. So section two is going to be these two striped together. Section three is the standalone. And as Stephen West would say, these two are on date night. You have to love these two. Yeah. They're the date. The next two in section two are like the um, chaperones. They're nice, you gotta like them, but they're not the main part of the shawl. Then the fifth color has to be a standalone color and you could do a pop of a tonal, like a totally different color, or you can do a variegated. So that's what I did. So that is the Vertices Unite uh, shawl. So a little color change on that shawl. Um, but again, absolutely loving it. It is a super easy knit. It is a lot of garter stitch, which is perfect for TV knitting. So having a great time knitting that one. Shawl number two. Are you staying awake, Mom? <laughs> I'm lulling my mom to sleep. <laughs> How many of you have fallen asleep on me already? Oh my God. Oh, that's too, too funny. <laughs> Mom, you just snooze while I yak about my shawl. That's okay. Good, good. This is why she's a part-time co-host. There you go. <laughs> just look over and you're nodding. Oh, I can't wait to replay this. On, I cannot wait to replay this. This is priceless. It's not getting edited out. That part is good. Okay, the next shawl is that I'm, I'm on a Stephen West kick at the moment. You go to sleep, Mom, because I'm still talking about Stephen West. Um, the next shawl that I'm... Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm just all tangled. 
help me, I'm tangled, whoops, why am I all tangled, um, is Speckle and Pop. Oh, so many people have made this shawl. Everybody's made Vertices United as well. But this is my Speckle and Pop. Did I lose a marker? No. Oh, I just, I'm loving, 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 loving this. O-M-G, loving this shawl. How do I show this? I don't know how to show it exactly. Um, no, that's the wrong way. This would be the right way to show it. So this is the Speckle and Pop. And if you want to know the history of the yarns that I chose, uh, see episode 16. There's a really cute Stephen West story in there about these yarns. This light gray is a uh, Stephen Wool, uh, West Wool Bicycle in the, hmm, which colorway was this puppy? Which colorway was that puppy? One was Dutch Sky. This was Dutch Sky. Yes, that was Dutch Sky. And then what you're supposed to do is it, it gets progressively darker. So I don't, hopefully you can see, but I have started striping in right about here. I started striping in um, a slightly darker gray, which is this beautiful Ancient Arts Little Soft Nettle fingering in the Roaring Twenties colorway. And then as you go along, you do a certain number of repeats of the pattern. It's super easy. You get this beautiful chevron-y pattern happening with this beautiful I-cord edging. And then as you go along, it's going to be even a darker gray. You transition into a darker gray, which this one is Westwood uh, Bicycle in Canal House. Yeah, so that's the Westwood. So Stephen West's own line of wools in Canal House. Now, my only concern with my choices is these two grays, they look quite, they look different, a little bit lighter and darker than each other, but this one is significantly darker. It's almost like I needed one in between these because this one is drastically darker. There's more of a contrast between these two than these two. So, you think it's gonna be okay? I hope so because I'll, I'll try it out because this is a very subtle graduation and I'm just at the point where I'm going to drop the Dutch sky, the light one, and and do uh, and knit just with this one. Um, and then when I get to the next section, um, when I get to the darker section, I might have to incorporate, either change it or incorporate a fourth gray color. Ooh, just careful, that's a sharp, don't don't poke yourself on that. And then the pop, so the color of opportunity, as Stephen would say, is this beautiful, beautiful yarn, which is Sock Nato from Ancient Arts in the, I met Stephen West and I liked it colorway. So can't, I can't say that without smiling. So that's what that is. And this entire shawl is my ode to Stephen West and West Knits. So there you go, that's that shawl. The third and last shawl that I'm gonna talk about, and I'm not gonna talk about it a lot because you've seen this one in previous episodes. This is a Stephen West. I told you it was a lot of Stephen West today. This is my Christmas slip stravaganza. So this is where I am. I'm just about to start section four and ladies and gentlemen, I hate it. I don't like this at all. I love the pattern. What I cannot stand is this section. I was trying to do a Christmas motif. Right. All Christmas colors. And in my head, red and white and gold and green are all kind of Christmassy colors. Mm -hmm. Almost like Christmas crackers. But my choices for this section suck. I don't like it. I really don't like it. I, I will never wear that. To me, it doesn't, I don't mind this section here where I've got the mohair and the pink and the green and, and, and it's, you know, interspersed with white. This section I like, this section I hate. So here's my theory. 
I don't know if this is possible. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if it's possible. Yes, it's possible. Anything's possible if you put your mind to it. I'm going to cut this out. Oh my word. <laughs> I'm going to experiment. I'm going to sacrifice this puppy and I'm going to experiment because here's my theory. Can you hold that just for a second? Hold that side. Okay. So here's my theory. I'm going to cut. These are holes. It's all the way down. I'm going to cut this whole section off. And I'm going to unravel like one row of this border. I'm going to try and grab it as best I can of this border and put it on a provisional. I'm going to re-knit this section and then attach in colors two. that I like. And then I'm going to figure out how to attach the two together. <laughs> that would be like maybe Kitchener stitch the whole thing or mattress stitch the whole oh thing. No, probably God, Kitchener no. stitch. But that's what I can't stand this. I love this shawl. It's going to be gorgeous. I love the red. I love the mohair. I love the sparkly pink. I don't even mind the green, white, and pink speckle. I hate the green and yellow honeycomb. Yeah. I just can't get over it. So, there you go. Okay. Revelation number two. That is right, my gosh, Linda. That so what do you think, eh? That is such a job to be able to cut that. And my sister's like, why don't you just rip the whole thing out? Oh, God, no. Because you had to cut all the different pieces, right? I mean, you're changing yarn colors constantly. Yeah. You'd have to, no, no. I want to make it, so that is my, this is an experiment in July. July is going to be all about Stephen West. It's going to be my Stephen West experiment. Okay. There you go. So that's it for works in progress for now because otherwise it'll overwhelm everybody. But that's kind of it. So by all means, I'd love your comments. What do you think I should do? Should I or should I not cut it? And in the spirit of having fun with your knitting, because this is the For Fun of Knit podcast, we're going to have a little giveaway. So yes. We are giving away a skein of Westwood yarn. So this is Stephen West's bicycle yarn. It's beautiful. It is a hunt. It's a, I think it's 90% wool and 10% Texel. Um, and it is 390 yards. It is fingering weight. It could be considered sport, but I think it's fingering weight. And it is in the color Roswitha. And this is part of the collection I got uh, in 2019 as part of his three month yarn club. And so I am happy to include this. It's a dusty rose. So I don't know what it's showing like up on camera, but it is, would you call that a dusty rose? Yes, yes it yeah, is. Yeah, it's a dusty rose. And this is the same yarn that I'm doing the um, speckle and pop with, just different colors. And so that is the giveaway. Tell me. What do you think? Should I, shouldn't I? And what would you do? Those are the two things. So in your comments, vote yes or no for doing some sort of a surgery on this. <laughs> surgery, I guess. I like the bag too. Yeah, well, thank you. The bag is actually, change of topic, stitching the high notes. So Joanna, who is, um, she's in San Francisco and she's a part-time opera uh, choir singer. Oh, and she yes. works for the uh, San Francisco Opera oh. House. Oh, Yes. So she is in administration and operations there. I think she's in fundraising. Oh, okay. And yeah, she and she's these bags? and sh and sh as a part time because the singing was sort of off and on. So she started uh, a project bag company called. Well, her her podcast is called Stitching the High Notes, and so this is one of her Christmas bags that I got. I love it. She does excellent work. Uh, she's very particular and meticulous details, uh, and she's just lovely. And if you haven't watched her podcast, Stitching the High Notes, please do so. She's absolutely lovely. But that's that very one. Very nice. Cool. Um, I should also say that, because I didn't mention it, that this 
probably because I didn't show you. This bag is what houses my Vertices Unite and it's by Rave Stitches. And I do believe Rave Stitches is part, um, so the owner's name is uh, Carol. She's got an Etsy shop called Rave Stitches and you can get these bags through the Woolen, Fo uh, the woolen Frog. That's how I got them, the Woolen Frog. Um, and the Woolen Frog is a yarn store that just got their own website. But these are, I love this. This is also a beautiful project bag. And it's different because it's got snaps instead of zippers. And she has a nice pocket on it. Very nicely done. Very Don't nice. Don't you think? I think it's kind of cool. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for whips. <laughs> so let's go on to acquisitions. Have you purchased anything lately? No, I haven't. You haven't. You've been very good. I have been, yeah. So I think you're undeserving of a gift. Oh, really? Oh, how wonderful. I love that. <laughs> I bought mom a Rave Stitches bag. It's got cats. It's in mom's beautiful jewel tone colors. Yeah, yeah. And it's Lovely cats. And cats. I love that. There you go. My very gift nice. to you. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I love yeah. it. <laughs> now you can, put, you can put your socks or something or your Absolutely. sweater in there. Absolutely. No, she has no lovely. project bag. She's got a big basket and everything sits in the big basket. So I figured, oh no. Give her a project bag that'll help yeah well, so it's very very sweet i will talk to you lovely. a little bit about acquisitions this is a basket that i purchased from one of my local yarn stores called penelope fiber arts and brenda is the owner of penelope fiber arts in ocean park in white rock she is also the organizer uh, of and basically the founder of fiber west which is a, a yarn um it's not a festival. What, is, what do we call them? It's not a yarn festival. What is Knit City? Uh, it's a yarn. It's a yarn. It's not uh, a festival. Oh what are dear. they called? Uh, Exposition. Can't yeah. think of it. But it's done in Cloverdale, so uh, in the Fraser Valley. And it focuses on hand dyed yarns, all, you know, accessories, etc. But it has a, a, a more a, a more of a focus on spinning and wool than Knit City might. So Knit City is our huge yarn, yarn haul um, event with, oh my goodness, so much yarn. Fiber West, I would say is slightly smaller, but uh, more farm to yarn kind of idea. So anyway, she has these bags and these bags are from uh, Big Mama, Big Blue Mama um, ba baskets, let's go. Big Blue Mama. And Big Blue Mama is uh, out of Calgary, Alberta, and they source their baskets from Guyana, I do believe, uh, supporting from Ghana, pardon me, Ghana. Bolgatanga, Ghana. So they are making sure that the workers get a fair wage for their work. And so that's always nice to be able to do a little bit of international sponsorship. Um, and in here, I have some of my yarn acquisitions. Uh, so here we have, I, okay, watching, of course, Cheverell stuff. She was talking about Mace of Skeins. So Macy from Mace of Skeins, that's her sticker. I love it. The Tulip, 50 gram, um, they're half skeins of her Tulip colorways. Oh my gosh. These are just those sunset colors that I love. Yeah, those lovely. sunset lovely. colors that I love so much. Um, happy colors. They're so happy, aren't they? They're, just, they're yeah, just happy. Happy colors. Happy colors. So that was one acquisition. I have got no plans for this. I do not know what I'm doing, but I loved it. So bought that. Um, I belong to two, three sock clubs. I belong to Sweet Fiber. And so this is, that was only a three month club. I just started with Yarnables because I wanted to, um, oh, I should say, sorry, Mace of Skeins is out of Texas. So this was delivered direct to my house. No duty. Strange. Lovely. Loved it. Mace of Skeins out of Texas. Um, Sweet Fiber Yarns is local. And I do believe her name is Michelle. If I'm not mistaken, where are you, Michelle? What happened to my little card on you? I thought your name was, oh, pardon me, Melissa. Melissa Thompson. Um, from Sweet Fiber, and this is her logo. And she had a three-month uh, yarn, sock club yarn, and it was yarn, 
and a corresponding mini and these are deluxe these are very very beautiful skeins they are 80 20 um, and you get a uh, what is it how many meters is this 415 yards or 379 meters in the main skein and then you get 82 meters or 25 um, doesn't come in yards pardon me uh, 25 gram mini skein corresponding so I don't have a plan those are gonna be socks for sure but that is lovely just look at this it's it's you know deep purple faded to a little bit lighter purples with this beautiful consistent gray all the way through love that love that and the last one oh well, the third so I have the sock clubs are sweet fiber yarnables I just started this because I was watching the crazy sock lady Kay from the crazy sock lady thought I would try it I don't see this as a long-term thing for me um, but I wanted to try it just to see what it was like. And the third sock club is Over the Moon Yarns, uh, their Star Trek club. I missed June. I oh, missed, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I did, didn't diarize it properly, so I missed June's. But I bought July, so when as soon as that comes, I'll show it to you on the next one. But hey, Trekkie all the way, man, what can I tell you? But this Yarnable box is quite interesting. It's very, very lovely. It's nicely put together. And what you get is you get a little bag of goodies and then you get a, a little bag with um, a skein of yarn in it. And the skein of yarn is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. This particular, and I think they change the yarn dyer every time. I could be wrong, but this one is by Hypnotic Yarns. And I do not know where they're from. I should have looked that up. But this is their plush sock fingering, which is 85 merino 15 uh, nylon in the wildflowers colorway. Oh, I hope you can see that. Yeah, it is pretty. coming across a little bit darker or not as vibrant, but it is just gorgeous. I don't know if you can see how. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. So a gorgeous, well worth it just for the skein of yarn. It's like a field of yeah, wildflowers. wildflowers. Exactly, it's beautiful. And then it comes with, because of the wildflower yarn, it comes with wild seeds that are pollinator attractors, so a bee. So it, and it even comes with the instructions on how to plant it in the back. So that's fun. It came with some honeycomb stitch markers, and these, uh... oh, so it is hypnotic. It says yarnable by hypnotic yarn. So hypnotic yarn must be the whole yarnable box. So it must be always hypnotic yarns, I guess. And then a little bit of the naked bee hand sanitizer. Is that not the cutest thing? The naked bee. All good stuff, none of the bad stuff. The naked bee, is so cute. Orange blossom and honey hand sanitizer. Nice. That is very appropriate. We yes. love that. Yeah. And so, and you also get a card that highlights all the extras that you got, and you're supposed to scratch to see if you got a discount. So I will scratch at some point to see if I get a discount for some other purchase. But that was kind of the acquisitions for the day. Okay. The last acquisition I will talk about was our coffee mugs, which were from yeah, Remembrance cute. Potteries. Everybody knows Natalie. Um, but I actually, so this one has three gray sweaters and one aqua sweater and then my socks. I just haven't used them, I bought them and I thought, oh, this is a perfect opportunity. Yeah. Because they we're both here. They are lovely. So a bit of a splurge for sure. But I wanted a mug that was knitting related. And they have the provisional. And then it has that beautiful, that beautiful stripe of stitching, or mom calls it a provisional cast on. Yeah, it's a provisional <laughs> so I love cast that. On. So remembrance is pottery. So there yeah. you go, in a nutshell. Anything else? Oh, you're already knitting on your hat. I am. You decided that's the project you wanted to knit on. Well, uh, right now it is because I haven't done anything to it for a while now. So. Uh, but, and before the winter, I would like to have it finished. There you go. And that, to end off, is this 
Everyday Slouchy Beanie by Tristan from Dragon Horde Yarns. Yes. And Mum is using some Surrey Alpaca combined with Ancient Arts yarn. And it's very nice, very soft. Let me just show it quickly. I can't remember the colorway, but it's got blues and greens. I hope you can see the blues and greens in that. And a little bit of chocolate brown. And so to lighten it up, we paired it just with uh, a cream Surrey alpaca. Uh, pardon me. Yeah, this this is Surrey alpaca. It's drops alpaca. That's what that was. Yeah. And the Ancient Arts, I can't remember the colorway, but it's a beautiful. And Ancient Arts is out of Alberta. Actually, I'm finding there's a lot of dyers in Alberta, which makes sense because, you know, hey, sheep. Yeah. Um, sheep. But yeah, so that's it in a nutshell. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. I think we're going to sign off. But thank you, everyone, for joining us. It's been a great hour and a bit. And I hope that you are enjoying the weather that we're enjoying because we are certainly spoiled in the month of June. Our temperatures are probably five degrees hotter than they normally are this time of year. Yeah, because um, June is usually a, a bit of a rainy month. Yeah, it's usually... Um, and we need, we need the rain. Yeah, we usually get gray, May, and well, May is usually nice, but we always get June gloom. Yeah. But not this year. This year, we, this the beginning year. of June was iffy, but the latter half of June is spectacular. Yeah. So very much looking forward to that. Folks from BC, we can all travel within BC now. So that restriction, we are not localized to our own community now. We can actually go throughout the province. Uh, Mid-July, we think we're going to get opened up across the country. We're hoping and hopefully sometime in July, early August, uh, our American counterparts can come visit, which would be absolutely lovely. Yes. You know, and yes. at least if we could travel there and they could travel back, that would be fabulous. Yeah. yeah. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. But on that note, thank you very much for those of you that are first time viewers. I hope you found this entertaining. If you enjoyed the content, Please like and subscribe for those of you that have been watching for a while. I'm so sorry it took so long to do an episode. I got a few comments. Are you okay? Are you going to podcast again? Oh my gosh, that warmed my heart. Um, to be missed was yes, was absolutely. was quite quite humbling and very very sweet. So thank you, and uh, I hope everybody's taking care of themselves, keeping well, and enjoying uh, the beginning of hopefully a great summer. So thanks everyone. Take care for now. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.